Adrian Balu regressou a Lisboa, desta vez com o Power Trio. O histórico guitarrista dos King Crimson deu-nos uma entrevista no final do concerto. After what I can only describe as an amazing show, we're joined by Adrian. Hello, Adrian. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Excellent, after this wonderful, wonderful show. Well, how did you feel about it? I loved it. I thought it was a great audience, you know. They're very excited. You can tell I'm still sweating. Uh, I was too, so happy. Yeah. Nice venue. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not very often we get to play here, so I'm very pleased to be here. You, as a leader, uh, as a singer of King Crimson, left a particular mark in Portuguese music concert history. When you opened for Roxy Music in 91 or 82, that everyone that's, uh, who, who was at the show at the time tells me that you totally overshadowed Roxy Music and no one remembers their set, and remember, but remembers the, the, the totally avant-garde things that King Crimson did. Do you have any recollections of that? No, that's, that's so far back. I, of course, remember doing the tour. I remember coming here. I remember playing with Roxy Music. Uh, and I do remember, you know, the audiences were excited. You know, that's a long time ago, and I've done a lot of concerts since, since then. 5,862 <laughs> shows. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed your gear. Uh, what happened? Did you stop uh, using a, a amp or something? We've been doing so much touring, so much flying and things, and you, you're very limited with how much you can bring. So in the last six months, I made a big effort to downsize my gear um, and into just two racks and a computer. <laughs> and wherever I go, they provide uh, something for me to play through. The beautiful thing about it is now I have something small and mobile and also now I have a whole new area that I can work in because there's a lot of new stuff that I'm, I'm going to be doing with this new gear. Whenever I change gear, it, it, it results in a lot of new material. It inspires me. <laughs> as, as Robert would say, a small mobile intelligent unit. Yeah, that's it. That's the idea. Possibly go in, right until the end of the alphabet, maybe. Maybe so. Maybe so. I've only gotten through E so far. I've, yeah. got, I've got to tackle F and just keep going from there. There's a long way to go, and we yeah, hope. There is. You know, that, but don't worry. I've saved many years of my life. <laughs> I'm still, I'm not done for a long time, folks. <laughs> what about King Crimson? What is the current status of, the, of King Crimson? I talked with Robert a few months back, and he told me that he wouldn't be doing anything for at least a year and a half. And he's doing, uh, settling things in his personal life and business affairs and things, uh, trying to find some of the money that's owed King Crimson, I hope. After that, we'll see if he's interested in doing something again or if he's uh, not ready, I, I don't know. Uh, I did tell him, of course, that when he is ready, just call me, buddy. <laughs> I'll be there. very important that he feels good about it. When he does, we'll do something. And if he... Oh. Oh. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. It's, it's fine. It's fine. We'll... Robert, Robert, please don't mess with the lights. <laughs> How you do that from England, I don't know. He has a very particular sense of timing for King Crimson. Don't you feel it is a necessary band to exist right now? And always, basically. I do, yeah. I mean, I think King Crimson is always about pressing forward, doing new things, uh, trying to reinvent the wheel a little bit. In my world, uh, you can't be, there can't be too much of that because I love adventurous music. I've always seen it as, you know, not a, a band before its time, but a band that's always been, you know, different than its time. And it's always different from itself, and it's always different from anything else that's being done. That's exactly what I'm saying. You know, the idea in King Crimson is to change and move forward and challenge yourself, really. What I think about it that's, that's interesting, and I thought this even before I was in the band, which I was a big fan of the band for many years, uh, long before I joined it, I always felt the same thing you're saying. No one else really sounds like that. It, it's a unique brand of music, and when people ask me, well, what kind of music do you play? It's difficult to say. I, I would say King Crimson music. You guys have such a sense, such a, a different sense of musicality. It's, it's hard to even conceive someone playing like that for a musician, I believe. 
I felt the same way, like, what these guys really have come from a different planet. And then one day I woke up and I was on that planet. <laughs> there are reasons for it. I could actually give you specific musical reasons. We work in certain ways. We, there is a set of rules, I believe. There are yeah. many rules. Uh, in fact, in King Crimson, there are a lot of things you don't do. There's very few things that you are allowed to do. Certain scales, certain combinations of things. I've always likened it to if you had a box of 24 crayons and you took out just six of them and said, these are the ones we can use and throw the rest of them out. There's two scales, chromatic, which is every note, of course, and then we use one that's called, uh, no, I always forget this word. <laughs> Thank you. See, well, I've just played a show. I'm sorry, my brain is addled. Oh, anyway, it's a, it's a, it's, fine. it's a good scale. <laughs> Symmetrical, that's it. It's a good word. Symmetrical scale. I really like to utilize the King Crimson method for myself, but sometimes I also like to be more of a a songwriter away from that uh, because that's a side of my life too. And then there's many other sides, you know, I like to experiment and do things with guitar that, that don't necessarily fit in either one of those categories. So, <laughs> One of my ideas for the, the uh, Power Trio was to kind of take up a Crimson style uh, with my own solo music included in it. Um, because I, I could see that Crimson was starting to do less and less and less, and I wanted to have a similar vehicle. About playing live, are you conscious of people who are able to dance in odd time signatures? I've seen a few do that. I, I, I'm, I do it myself on stage, so... <laughs> It's not exactly dance music, you know. <laughs> I like the fact that it's uh, a bit complicated, you know. That's what I mean by challenging. You don't go to sleep in that show and you don't, you know, you really have to prepare for it. It takes a lot of rehearsal. You have to be at your best. Girls like it. <laughs> always, always a... Uh, Both the girls that like the band like it. <laughs> Back on. Hi, I'm Adrian Ballou. This is Genesaw C. Aren't you glad?